Let's try the three finger. Oh, that's pretty funky. That's a bit of a, won't you take me to a funky town? Let's take a look at bass and how to add bass in GarageBand iOS. So we've got Benny set up here laying down a funky groove. Let's take a listen to Benny. So we've got our drummer track and what we want to do here is add in some bass, but GarageBand actually gives you a heap of different ways to add bass to your projects. The first and simplest way is to use a bass loop. Now, if you've never used Apple loops before, loops are here in your top right. You just need to tap on this little icon and you're going to get this. Now, you can see here, I'm already cheated. I've already searched for bass. So if you didn't have that filter there, you'd have all of these different uh, things that you can choose. And whoop, I choose one. I chose, choose, I chose one incorrectly there. We'll come back to loops. But what we can do is we can actually search here. So we're just going to type in bass and hit enter. And look at this. We've got so many different options here for bass, so many things that we can choose. Now, uh, one that I really like that I was trying out in, in, in testing, because I do test this stuff out so that uh, you don't have to see me fumble around too much, was this one here, this Sweet Dreams synth bass. So if we tap on any of these, you get the bass sound like this. Yeah. Don't you reckon that's going to be funky? All right, so we to, to bring it in, we tap it and we drag it on in and we drop it like that. And there you go. We've got the four bars there and we can play along. Here's Benny with our bass synth. I like that little do, do, do. Very cool. Now we can, of course, uh, grab our loop here at the end and move this forward and back. So because it's only four bars, we can do that. And what if we wanted to put the variation in? Well, no problem. We go back to our loops. And uh, again, we're going to scroll back down to where we were for some reason. Uh, have we got bass on there still? Yeah. So we go back to the sweet dreams. The sweet dreams are made of this bass, I believe. Uh, why can't I find it? There it is. And we'll bring that one, tap and drag. And this time we'll pop it after that one. And then it will do this variation. So let's just take a listen to this variance. Whoa. Nice, yeah. I almost like that one better, but that's all right. We'll do it in two halves. We'll, uh, we'll audition this and see how it's going to sound. So that is the easiest and simplest way to use bass is to just add a loop in there. Now, if you haven't used loops before, there's some cool things you can do. You can tap here and go to settings. We can actually transpose it. So if we want this higher, we can boost it up, say like five semitones, and suddenly we've got a... Cool, yeah? You can reverse your samples, you can play around. I've got a whole video all about loops that you can check out. The one thing I want to draw attention to is this follow temp tempo and pitch. This means that if we change up our time signature or our key signature over here and we go, broop, it's actually going to follow it. So it'll actually adjust your loops. So they go at the same speed, but even cooler than that, if you adjust the key signature and bring this down like so, you're going to get this. Right, very cool indeed. So uh, let's take those out of there for now. We can bring them back in later if we if we decide we want them back. But I'm going to show you some other ways to add bass because there's a ways that you get a whole lot more control, and that is of course using our bass instrument. So to add our bass instrument, we tap on the plus button down here in the bottom, and what we're going to do is scroll across until we find the bass. And what we can do here is we're going to tap on more sounds and then we can decide which bass we want. So you can either have bass guitars or there are a few actual electronic basses and you've also got your upright bass there. So let's just grab the P bass. Happens to be my favorite bass sound here in GarageBand because you get this. You get that real sort of Fender P bass sound, which I think sounds kind of cool. Now, there's a bunch of different ways that we can do this. The easiest way, again, we're kind of going from easiest to most uh, most challenging, is to use your autoplay. So if you've used autoplay before, you'll know that you just simply tap with a finger and it will start playing. We've got four different variants. Three, four. Now, some instruments, and let's test if this is one of them, if you use two or three fingers, you actually get a second variation and a third variation on that same thing. So here's autoplay four by itself with one finger. Let's try it with two fingers. Yeah, that, that could work with this funk beat, right? That's our two finger. Let's try a three finger. Oh, that's pretty funky. That's a bit of a, won't you take me to a funky town? 
Right, I think I'm going to go with the two. So to record in here, all we need to do is tap on the record button, then hit this C minor chord. And the reason I'm using C minor is that most of your loops are in C minor. And let, in fact, let me just check. Yeah, I've got C minor as my key signature. So most of your loops are in C minor. So I normally start there when I'm doing something like this. So let's uh, hit the record button. I'm then just going to tap with two fingers on the C minor, and this will record in this bass pattern. And we, could only, we only need to do four bars because that's all recorded in there. And we can move this on back. Just drag that back. Now we can loop this by just tapping it and hitting loop. And there you go. We very quickly created a funky bass and drum beat by using our autoplay. Right? Very cool. And the beauty of virtual instruments is if we want to change this up, we're like, oh, I'm not feeling the P bass sound. I want to, I want to find if, out what this would sound like with a bit more of a muted bass sound. Well, guess what? We can come back to our instrument, tap on that one, and throw our muted bass on. And then, yeah. Pretty cool, yeah? The other thing is we could use our electric ba electronic basses. So say we wanted to switch it up to the retro bass, we've got an electronic bass sound. Take a listen. Right? So yeah, I actually kind of like that one. I like that electronic bass. And with the electronic bass, you've even got your cutoff and your resonance that you can play around with here. So we'll, uh, we'll increase the cutoff so it kind of does this. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. All right, so that is that is a way to create a bass sound there using your autoplay. But of course, we've got other ways to do this. Let's just, uh, we'll mute out that one for now. Uh, we can actually add in using other bass guitar methods. So we'll come in here, we'll tap this one. We'll grab the Liverpool bass here. What on earth accent was that? We'll grab the Liverpool bass. <laughs> this time, we'll show that we can actually use the chords. So... We can just use these. So if you wanted to do this in C minor, you could be like, and then you would, and then F minor, and then G minor. So you got four notes, and you could use all four of those, and it kind of guides you here a little bit. So if we wanted to play along with this and we knew we were playing in C minor, we could hit record and just give it a bit of this. Most of that was garbage, but here's the thing. <laughs> we can we can split to our heart's content. So I think this is where I got it right. Yeah, we'll use just that bit. We'll use this bar here. So this is where you can sort of pick and choose. We'll split that out. We'll grab it here. We'll just split this one bar, and then we'll just loop this over and over again. This is the beauty part again of virtual instruments. We can cut and splice and do all these fun things, and then just move this to the front, tap it, and loop it, and look at that, you've got it all the way through. So yeah, a cool way to do that. Let's delete that now because I don't really like it. So that's using your actual chords. You can, of course, use notes as well. So if we go back to here, rather than being in the chords mode, up in the top right here, we can tap on notes. And now we've actually got the ability to play a bass guitar. Now I can't really play with my mouse here because it's really clunky. So let's just play in a bit of a bass group, and I'm gonna use my fingers. You'll be able to see just vaguely where the strings are vibrating, where I'm hitting, but you won't be able to see the marker there because it's just a little bit too tricky. So let's play in a little bit of a funky bass groove here. We'll hit record and... And as you can see there, you can do cool things with the bass like string bends, or you can slide up and down, or you can even do hammer-ons. And I've got a whole video about bass guitar and guitar in GarageBand if you want to learn more about that. So let's, uh, so we've laid that down there, and once again, if we're not happy with that, we can, we can cut it, we can slip it around, so we'll just go with those first two, and then loop it out. And there you go, you can create yourself a pr pretty cool kind of groovy bass beat. 
And uh, of course, you can edit too. So we can tap there and edit your notes. So you've got complete control here. You can come in and change the notes, change the velocity, do all your standard MIDI note editing like you can do in other things. Uh, we've got a heap more in here. Sorry, we, this is the complete. It is all about bass, I did warn you. So <laughs> let's come back in here to the bass guitar because there's a couple of other cool things that we can do here. We can use the scale mode. So scale mode is awesome if you don't really know what notes you should be hitting. So what we're going to do is, let's say use the minor pentatonic. That's usually a cool scale to start with here. And uh, in fact, we'll come out, we'll delete out that little bass groove that I laid down there. Delete that one. Come back to the start. And with our scale mode set, then... We're right there in the pentatonic scale. So we can just play whatever note we like and we know that it'll sit and sync nicely into this C minor groove that we're actually building out here. So let's hit uh, hit the record button and just give this a bit of a... Oh, gee. See, sliding around with the mouse is a bit hard. So I'm just gonna undo that. Just, just imagine, imagine for a moment that I'm down here pressing these buttons. So hit record and we'll go. Right? You don't need to know a thing about the scale. You don't need to know what notes to hit. You don't need to be daunted by the actual layout of a bass guitar like that. You can throw your scale mode on and you're good to go. Pretty cool, yeah. I did this on strings recently. A lot of similar options to what we have with strings. One, uh, sorry, no, I'm going to jump over now. The other way. So if, you, if you're not at home with these virtual instruments, you don't want to use loops, but you do love your keyboard, then yes, we can use our keyboard for bass sounds as well. Let's come out here. We'll mute out that one. We'll grab. Oh, did I solo that? I meant to mute it. We'll mute it. We'll go to plus. And this time we're going to grab the keyboard. Let's lay down some keyboard bass. So we can tap here on more sounds to lay down our bass. And uh, what we'll do first is if you wanted to replicate the bass guitar, we'll go back to the top main categories right here at the start. If you go down to other, we've actually got our bass guitars here. So say we wanted that P bass again, we can select the P bass and now, I don't know what that was, but you can play the exact same thing that we played in there, but the benefit here is you're here on the keyboard now. And the keyboard has a bunch of other functions that we can actually try out here. And I'll show you probably the coolest one at the end. So yeah, there you go, that's a tease. You have to hang around to check that one out at the end, but very, in its simplest form, we can hit record here and then just, uh, and apparently close GarageBand. But we have background mode running, so it worked okay. There you go. You can actually close down GarageBand in the middle of recording. And we get our... We get our funky P bass sound. And the cool thing about recording here instead of over on the actual uh, bass guitar is now we can change that up to any keyboard instrument we like doesn't just have to be a bass, it can be anything we like. And that includes some of our synth bass sounds. So uh, let's go to my favorite synth bass sound, the clutch bass. And let's just see what that sounds like with this bass groove. Yeah, yeah. Right? You can hear that stereo sound that you're getting in there. Very cool. And again, we, we've got, because we're now using an electronic or electric bass, we've got cutoff, we've got resonance, we've got our attack and our decay. So we can actually adjust that. So if we want to, a bit of a slower attack on that bass sound, we can get more of that wobbly kind of sound, increase the decay. So you can actually go in and edit your sound and make it sound however you like. The other thing you've got here is you've got pitch and modulation wheels. So if we're... You can use your pitch bend wheel and that will actually record that in. So if we wanted to come down here and we wanted to record in some of this bass, we hit the record button there. And there you go, it actually records in all of that movement of that pitch wheel. And if we take a listen. Very cool, yeah. We'll come back over here. You've also got a modulation wheel there. So you can use the modulation effects. And the other cool thing is, on a lot of these synth bass sounds, where you touch on the key actually changes the sound. Isn't that cool? So you can be like... <laughs> you can get some pretty insane kind of sounds with like a... 
by moving up and down your key. Now, we wouldn't be talking about synth sounds unless we talked about alchemy, yeah? Because alchemy synth that's built into GarageBand. Again, all this stuff is 100% free, which I find kind of ridiculous. Alchemy synth here has a whole bunch of bass sounds. Look at this. Look at that array of bass sounds that you have to choose from. And uh, all of them are very cool. But of course, if you're creating electronic music, 808 is where it's at, yeah? So let's hit the 808 from the Flex and Flow kit. And we've got ourselves... We got ourselves a nice tuned 808. So uh, let's uh, come out of there. We'll get rid of this. We'll get rid of this. Uh, actually, no. Let's let's duplicate this out. Let's give ourselves a new track. We'll just uh, solo that, and then let's bring in and play some 808 bass here. So if we hit the record button. <clears throat> there you go. We've got some 808 in our lives. Everyone is happy. So if we come back over to here, then uh, we play it back. Let's solo that. There you go. Ooh. Nice. Very cool. Uh, and uh, what, I, I, we've got an extra tip here from Tom. Uh, and I've showed this before, I'm not going to show it in this video, but you can actually merge down your track and then move it over to a bass amplifier if you want to amplify your bass sound. So that's a really great additional tip. There you go. This is why I do these free because uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, there's lots of cool stuff here. All right. Uh, let's, uh, now, what was my final thing? Oh, yeah. So one final cool thing that we'll do here, we'll, we'll uh, duplicate that out. We'll use this on the 808 bass. Uh, one of the coolest sounds that you can use with a bass here in the keyboard, obviously we have our scale mode. So we have the same scale mode that we had there with our guitar. So we can go back to our minor pentatonic and... Pretty cool, yeah? So we can do that. Uh, we'll just put this back to off again. But the arpeggiator is actually a cool thing. If you're creating some music and you want uh, that sort of do 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 kind of sound, the arpeggiator is where, it, where it's at. So let's tap the arpeggiator, let's hit the run button. And by, as a default here, this will play 16th notes over a two octave range. So if we just tap on the C here, it goes like that. If we want it to go over four octaves and we hit this, right, that's cool. But it's even cooler than that because if we hold down two notes, so let's hold down a C minor chord with a C and a, a uh, E flat. Right, how cool is that? So if we wanted to record that in, let's just hit the record button, Oop, like that. And hold this down. And there you go. Without any knowledge of how to play those chords and do those complicated runs, look at that. It's created it. It's put it all in there for you. Funky as funky can be. And the arpeggiator has a whole bunch of other functions in there as well that you can play around with. So if we come back to there, you can make the note order go up and down or random or however you like it there. You can change this to make it either slower or what I like to do is play around with like 30 second notes. And if you go like 30 second notes and then put the note rate right up here and you hold down say four notes, let's try this now. How cool would that be underneath your track? And you move your fingers around. And you get that sort of deer going on. I just think it's cool. The arpeggiator is where it's at. And of course, you're in alchemy, so you can change up all your settings here. You can scroll across and check out and change all of these different parameters and really customize your sound and make it your own. And there's a heap more uh, that is linked. If you go to studiolivetoday.com slash garageband, there is a whole bunch more videos as well as those that are linked down in the description of this video.